Hi guys, welcome to Delivery Studios. We're going to wrap up the Android Reminder Alarm application. If you are hitting this video for the first time, I will implore you to check out the Android Reminder Alarm app part 1 and part 2 in the YouTube channel. From there, you're going to understand the building blocks towards this full implementation of the Alarm Reminder application. In this uh, model, we are going to be cleaning up things, i.e we're going to actually uh, set up the null pointer that we're going to fix that when you're having a null pointer right there at the time when the alarm notification pops up that is you are not having a title in the notification and also we're going to uh, tweak up things like we're going to be adding the vibration and also the sound to the notification for you to actually achieve that, there will be a slight modification in the application in which we'll be e explaining in details right there in the Android Studio. So let's move straight to Android Studio and get that fixed up. Right there in Android Studio, I actually made amendment to a couple of our uh, classes right there in the project structure. Uh, this is actually going to flow now. Uh, we have the application work this way initially. Uh, you create, uh, you tap on the floating action button to actually create a new reminder. From there, the alarm set up and it's been triggered. Uh, this is not going to be working effectively because in the first creation of the alarm reminder activity, you're going to have a null URI. That's it because you've actually not set a URI. The URI is being gotten when you have to click on the list and uh, the adapter position binds up to the URI value and it's actually from uh, the current URI. So that's why you are not having uh, uh, the URI calling the, the title of the reminder. So we're going to actually uh, change the flow. Uh, the floating action button will only uh, enable you to uh, lock in uh, the title of the reminder. That's just what the floating action button is going to do for you. On click of each of the item in the recycler view, you're going to have uh, a detail page, and that detail page would just be a modification where you could actually add up uh, the alarm time, dates, uh, the repeat, and so on. So with that, you definitely have uh, a current URI. The current URI won't be null, and it would have added the adapter position based with the URI. So it's going to form a URI that could be pointed to the content provider when you're calling that right there in the notification so we, you could be able to extract the title based on the content URI. Let's, let me show you how we're going to achieve this uh, quickly. In the layout, in the activity main, uh, we're going to actually have a kind of instruction uh, which uh, will uh, be telling the users to actually click on the reminder title to set an alarm. And this we only show if we have lists of um, different reminder set up in the list view or a recycler view, any one you feel like using. So we have this text view right on top of the list view where we have the text click on the reminder title to set an alarm. We'll get to uh, manipulate this rather than the Java code. Uh, moving straight to the main activity. Sorry. Moving straight to the main activity. Uh, there's some uh, kind of uh, implementation we actually did here. Uh, you initialize the text view, which is the reminder text, and uh, by calling its ID over here. Cool. So how are we going to use the reminder text? Uh, we'll get to see how uh, the flow actually uh, goes with the reminder text. Now, in the on load finish, when you're trying to uh, call the loader manager to load any values or any reminder saved right there in the SQLite database, uh, we'll on load finish is where you get the bunch of cursor, which is a bunch of data, and uh, which is actually binded to the view. Uh, in this process, we'll check if the cursor gets count is greater than zero. Definitely, there's something if it's greater than zero. There has been a reminder as, as saved in this SQLite database. So if it's greater than zero, the visibility of the text will be visible. That's please click on any of this item to actually set up your reminder time. Uh, but if not, the visibility will be invisible. You won't see that text view. So that's just what uh, that is actually doing. And now let's look at what the floating action button will be doing this time. Initially, the floating action button is uh, calling an intent 
down to the add reminder activity but what it's going to be doing is going to be calling a dialog okay uh, we're actually going to look at how this flows in the add reminder button because you actually initialize this with a floating action button that you've seen it uh, up there you set on a click listener you override the on click method you have that set up and now I have to comment out the intent that actually triggers to the add reminder activity what is it doing now it's calling a method called the add reminder title so you only have uh, the uh, the room to add a title at first uh, so you won't be uh, adding the, uh, the, the the alarm time the dates the repeats the hours and so on you get to do that uh, when you are actually uh, going further like clicking on the alarm title for a detail now let's see the method the add reminder title does it over here are we using another dialog builder uh, where we instantiate and have an object you set the title of the builder uh, set reminder title cool now there is an edit text which we are setting up because it's actually going to take uh, the va uh, input values from the user and you call the set input type uh, the type class text or the type text variation password so we're actually going to take away this uh, password uh, let's keep up only the text uh, that's uh, the kind of uh, setup we are looking at not uh, the password kind of flow we want it to be text it should be plain text it should be visible so you set the view to the builder cool now you set positive part button and uh, at the same time you could just you know set the negative button that's the positive button will be okay while the negative button will be cancelled so on OK, probably when OK button is being clicked, what are you going to do? You instantiate the dialog interface whereby you set an on-click listener to that positive button and you override the on-click method. In the on-click method, that's where you're going to do a bunch of logic. What we're going to be doing in the on-click method, first, you need to do some sort of validation on the edit text. It shouldn't be empty. If it's empty, definitely you are not going to, we are not looking at saving an empty field at first. To the SQLite database. So once it's empty, which we've uh, gotten through the get text, you convert to string and check if it's empty, uh, you return that you go back to the state it was. So it's not going to do anything. But if it's not, it moves further on the code. It gets the text to string, it saves it down to the alarm type to which is a global string uh, created up here. We have it set up there. And uh, it's actually going to let us, it's going to save that variable. So it's going to save a value, which we have. So you could trigger the content values. Now we're going to save uh, the title to the SQLite database. Uh, you instantiate that, you have the values. Now you get to put uh, based on the column. What's the column name? We are putting the value to, which is the key title. And uh, the value itself is alarm title. That's fine. Now you trigger the URI, since uh, you're using uh, the content provider who set that up earlier on in the part one and two I will employ you to look at that uh, you get the content resolver you insert and uh, you call the content URI the content URI is the column and uh, you pass in the values cool after that uh, you could test if the new the URI is null probably uh, the insertion was done successfully or not if it is uh, you, you put you, you give a toast like the certain reminder title uh, set successfully but if not just tell the user that this failed and before you complete that you trigger the restart loader because at that point in time you would have added something new to the SQLite database and you need the loader to fetch that immediately so that it's actually going to populate the adapter with the view like swap the cursor on the unload finish so that's just uh, how they flow it so at the point of OK all this will be done once you click on the cancel, you also do the same thing. You override, uh, you override the on-click listener. And this time, what will we do? You can't. You, you, you specify cancel on the dialog. Uh, um, I love dialog builder, so that is actually going to cancel that. And uh, the builder, you call on the show, just to show the builder. Now the restart loader is just uh, calling the get support loader manager. This is the loader manager version four, not uh, the previous loader and it restarts the loader based on the uh, integer of uh, the, 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 the loader itself and uh, the activity. So that's actually going to restart the loader. Uh, we have that set up in the main 
activity so that's cool so they are with that uh, the uh, floating lecture bot is just only going to show that now log uh, a dialog for you to actually insert the title of the reminder that that's saved into the SQLite database let's get to look at the course adapter you need to do a tweak because uh, some things are, are good like some empty fields will be saved initially uh, for us to actually do that in the DBA upper first uh, you need to take away null since uh, you're going to actually be saving some null values uh, at first uh, because you still have to update that later on so you have the room to update uh, so you should actually take not null out of the creation of the SQLite database that's of the table rather but uh, mostly we actually set not null not null to all these uh, columns so you actually have to take that out give the room to actually uh, pass in a null value at first so uh, because that could just be updated later on so that's just the fix we did right there in the DBA upper back to the cost adapter now you have an adapter that's going to bind values and at the same time you need to handle some null values because uh, once you add the title at first uh, other aspects which is uh, the date uh, the time and so on the repeat are all going to be set to null and uh, you need to also handle null values when you are binding to views or else you will be having a null pointer exception when binding to the adapter so how are we going to do that firstly while well, we, we are actually populating the date and time uh, we are setting uh, the repeat that's to the uh, pre the list view right now uh, we also set in the image which is uh, the active image probably if uh, you've set an alarm or not so those are the three cases which we actually bind data to now let's see how we're gonna do that in the bind view method which is being over reading uh, you need to actually check for the date if the date is not equal to null that's when it's going to actually bind real data which is set the date and time and call the set reminder date time method to actually get that set up now else you have to create an else statement that is if it is null because it's actually going to be null at first what are you going to do you set the text that date's not set that it's not set yet that's just the value once it is null so you have that uh, set up clean out nothing is going to happen there the same thing goes for repeat you check if the repeat is not equal to null that means you have a repeat value from the database you set to the reminder repeat info as we have been doing this is uh, still maintained the only new line is the else statement if the repeat value is null what are you going to set you're going to set that repeat not set yet that's cool that is understandable so you have to set that it shows that you've not actually set a repeat to the alarm title cool now the same thing goes for the active if the active is not equal to null that is there's an active there is an active uh, icon you set the active image to active cool but now if the active is null why should you set an image which shows that you've added you've added an alarm you should just show an image that there is no alarm added yet that is the set image resource to the off gray which you can see rather from the uh, left that shows that there is no alarm so that's it so you've been able to handle all null cases when you bind the values to the adapter so cool all other methods all other implementations in this class are still maintained intact now let's get to look the add reminder activity you're doing virtually nothing on this activity it's left uh, that way because uh, it's when you're actually bringing in a new value that's when you need to actually uh, th that's when you have a null uh, current URI but once you have that set up already you have that in the SQLite database your current reminder URI is definitely not going to be null so you have that so you could actually clean up take away some code which are not needed but you could still maintain the reminder activity probably for uh, for other cases which you might still want to use uh, the application for so if we are not changing anything right there in the class the only tweak now would now be in the reminder alarm service this is where we are getting the null value of the title when we are having the alarm uh, notification so that's just it now we have a current URI with value so it's not going to be null because you've been able to set that to the uh, adapter earlier on so it, you, it's not going to be null whatsoever so that's cool now we still maintain every code nothing is changing 
nothing is changing the code it's just uh they now the cursor it's not this uri it's going to be with value because you've been able to get that from the intent passed from uh the uh the alarm or uh, scheduler so you're going to actually have a uri which has value cool that has been set up now the only inclusion here is the notification when we call the notification compact builder you set the content title to the content text the small icon the content intent vibrate that's the new inclusion you add a vibration you want that to vibrate and you add a sound now you're going to do that you call the set sound settings the system default notification URI. So that's a default sound for all messages, like bum bum that we used to know in Android, which has the default sound. Uh, so that is actually going to be applicable to the reminder. But if you need to add a different music, as you could bring in an MP3, and you could actually point that there by its URI. Cool. So it's actually going to call the sound. So that's where you need to set the sound. You could set the vibration, you could set the sound for your notification. Right then, the notification compact builder. So that's cool. So that's just where we need to fix. And with that, we have the full and robust nature of this application. No null pointer whatsoever, anywhere. Everything's working as planned, and they are blistering okay. So cool. This is uh, these are the implementations that I've done, and uh, we implore you to check on it and look at it vividly. I'll actually be uploading the source code to my GitHub so that we're actually going to pick. Uh, the source code from there use it uh learn learn more learn on how to uh, manipulate use the alarm manager impute an output from the sql database the content provider now room has come to stay room has actually uh creates an abstract layer on top of the sql database taking away a lot of boilerplate codes away from where you're building your sql database so this is a very cool approach for creating a robust client android application are we be there to actually uh, answer any of your queries any of your questions whatsoever on most of my videos so at this point in time i'll be showing the screencast and i'll be saying please 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 don't forget to strike on the subscribe button subscribe to my channel and at this time have a blessed time bye bye for now